Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. Come on, can we stand to our feet on this morning? Give God a hand clap of praise on today. Amen. Come on, let everything that has breath praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We honor the Lord on today. Amen. We say happy anniversary to the house of restoration. And we welcome Living Living Purpose Church for being here with us on this morning. We honor you all, Pastor Tail Lady. Amen. And just a household of faith all together. We welcome each and every last one of you. And we pray that you all came with expectations, amen, to receive of the Lord on today. Amen. Amen. We just want to worship the Lord. We want to create an ideal environment for our Savior. Amen. And make room for him to come in and do what he desires to do. Amen. So at this, at this time, let's turn our hearts to the Lord. God, we honor you this morning. We glorify your great name. We humble ourselves in your divine presence. And we ask for your forgiveness. Forgive us of all of our sins, God, those things we've done against your will. Whether it's in word, thought, or in the very deed, God, we stand boldly and we ask for forgiveness. That you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness, from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. God, we welcome you to this sanctuary, Father. We welcome you into our lives the more. And we, Lord, we say, Father God, have your way in us today. Do what you desire to do. Say what you want to say. Move us the way you want to move us, God. In the name of Jesus, for we make room for you in your presence, Father. In the name of Jesus. Father, we say that you are worthy of praise. You're worthy of glory. You're worthy of adoration. You're worthy of thanksgiving. You're worthy of every hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, right where you are, can you open your mouths and adore our Savior today? Come on, welcome in the Holy Ghost Sunday. Welcome in the Holy Spirit today. God, you are welcome in here. We give you worship of all Sunday. We give you adoration and praise. For there is no one greater than you. There is no one stronger than you. There is no one worthy of glory but you, God. So we open our mouths today as a trumpet in Zion. We open our mouths, God, as an instrument of praise. We open our hearts, Father, to receive all of Sunday that we'll see. To receive all that you're getting ready to do in this house today. Jesus, where your people are weak and torn down, God, you build them up. In the name of Jesus, give strength to the strengthless today, God. Give joy to those who don't have joy today. Encourage every discouraged heart. Lift up every bow down head, God. Hallelujah, but we welcome the Holy Ghost today. We welcome your power today. We welcome the anointing that destroys every yoke in our lives. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, Lord, you are welcome here. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. Mighty God, you are welcome here. Jehovah Jireh, you are welcome here. Jehovah Ella, you are welcome here. Jehovah Tishkanu, you are welcome here. The Most High God, you are welcome here. The Great I Am, you are welcome here. Our Father, you are welcome here. Our Healer, you are welcome here. Our Restorer, you are welcome here. Hallelujah. Move in the room today in the name of Jesus. For we are here for you. We are here because of you. And we glorify you. Come on, right where you are, can you bless this man? Oh, come on, we can do it today. Give your words of adoration and thanksgiving. Hallelujah, hallelujah. At this time, we're going to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. We ask that you would join in with us as we glorify him. Amen. I mean, that hallelujah is the highest praise we can give our Savior. In the midst of every test and trial, hallelujah is the best word that we can give him. Hallelujah. So at this time, find yourself in the presence of our King and just worship him. Give him the fruit of your lips this morning. You're worthy, oh God. You're worthy. Lift up your worship. Oh 
continue to move forward into the things of our Savior on today. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for scripture and prayer. I will give thanks and praise to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret and intricately and skillfully formed in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in your book, were all written the days that were appointed for me when as yet there was not one of them how precious also are your thoughts to me oh god, god. Yes, god. how vast is the sum of them if i can count them <laughs> they would outnumber the sand thank you god thank you lord, thank you, lord. when i am awake Dear God, our Father in heaven, we come to you now just telling you thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Father, we thank you. Thank you. We thank you now. Yes, thank you. We thank you for who you are. God, we thank you for who you are. God, we thank you for your power. God, we thank you for your Shekinah glory. Father, we thank you for your full weight. God, we thank you for your full exposure, your full expression. God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Father, for it is you that made us and that we are ourselves. We are your people, the sheep of your pasture. You told us to enter into your gates with thanksgiving. Come on, somebody. You told us to enter into your court with praise. To be thankful unto you and bless your holy name. God, we come to tell you thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. We give you praise now. Move in this atmosphere today, God. Throw your weight around, God. Let your glory be revealed right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. God, heal somebody's body today. God, deliver somebody's mind today. God, set somebody's soul free today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots. But we shall trust in the name of the Lord. For you are a strong tower. The righteous run into you and find safety. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in me. God, we give you glory. We open our mouth and tell you thank you. Lift those hands and tell God thank you. Lift your voice and tell God thank you. Cry out of your belly. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Glory. Now look at our pastor and first lady. Shanda la bakusha. Oh, glory. We pray that you touch him now. Touch our path from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, God. Do what only you can do. Be God in the midst of his life. In the name of Jesus. God, touch our first lady from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. Bind the hand of the evil one. Heal every organ in her body. In the mighty name of Jesus. Even our guest pastor today, God, we pray that the anointing shall rest upon him as he speaks, that he may be an oracle unto God. In the name of Jesus, God, bless and move and throw your weight around. Let your glory be revealed now in the sanctuary. Come on, open your mouth and tell God, I thank you. 
your hands together for the Lord. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. The Lord is our strength. He is our life. He is all that we need. I am so excited to be here on this morning. Uh, what an awesome time it is for us to be together. The Bible says how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that runs down the beard of Aaron. Onto his garments. The Bible says, Well, the Lord sees unity, he commands a blessing. Yes, sir. This is a day in history that we are excited about, that we have uh, had the opportunity for my brother, sister to come all the way from Chicago and LPC Church family. Thank you so much for coming and sharing with us on this morning on our 23rd. Uh, church anniversary. I want to say this. Mother Catherine, <laughs> let, let, let me tell y'all. Mother Catherine, raise your hand, Mother. Let them see you. Let them see you. Mother Catherine is just as much responsible for this fellowship. Amen. And us getting together uh, uh, than my brother and I. Last time I was there, uh, Mother Catherine said, when we coming back to Memphis? I said, Mama, I don't know. I don't know. I said, but we're going to talk to Bailey and see if we can work this thing out. Amen. And we got to planning and planning and planning and planning. We had a couple of other Sundays, amen. And finally, we nailed the Sunday. And I'm just so grateful for Mother Catherine loving us, amen. She loved us. Lady Joyce and I, we appreciate it. I do, however, um, have a proposition. Um, I was thinking, Mama, that we could kind of keep you, and I sent all the Stiller fans back with baby. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, it won't work. <laughs> Put that brother out to church, amen. <laughs> We, we, we made sure that we uh, told everybody about making sure that they didn't come in here in a Steelers uh, jersey. And that brother came in here this morning with that jersey on. And God bless that, you, my brother. That, that is not of God. Either. But we, we, we thank God for his being here. I, I um, reached out to my brother and I asked my brother. I asked him that he believe in free speech. And uh, he said, man, come on, baby. So I asked him to come in here and give a free speech so we don't have to give no money today. It's just a blessing, baby. No, it's just a joke. When I said that, he's like, come on, baby. I said, it's just a joke, man. It's just a joke. But what's so grateful? I'm believing that God is going to do something major in this place on this morning. I'm believing God for a shift. I'm believing God for a word. Yeah. Amen, somebody. I'm excited to see who Bailey is today in the Lord. Amen. Definitely a giant in the Lord. I'm so excited to know that in our humble beginnings, amen, we were some nappy head boys doing all kind of crazy stuff. But when God has his hand on your life, doesn't matter what you do in life, doesn't matter how many times you're railroaded, doesn't matter how many mistakes you make when God's hand is on your life, yes, He will lead and direct you because purpose yes, is on your life. So let's give the man of God a hand today. Amen. See my auntie, amen. Hannah over there, amen. Been a journey, amen. She has pulled through, and it's good to see her out with us all today. I uh, did not say what well, we're Agnew. Agnew. Praise the Lord. This is Ricky. Now, 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 y'all got to know that fella there, amen. Yeah. That, that fella there, amen, Lord. They told me you was coming. I said, what? 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I am so grateful to see them on today when we are in Chicago and we get a chance to hang out. Baby, they don't let us hang out with everybody. Amen. But we get a chance to hang out and eat with the home, the act news. Amen. And the harvest. I guess they're the younger of the crowd. Amen. But Thomas Oda. That, that's, that's that, y'all. <laughs> Thomas is a fun character to be around. Amen. Uh, I'm sure we're going to get a laugh or two uh, before it's all said and done. Listen, we're getting ready to move into the things of God. What I want to do is something different on today. I want to go ahead and expedite our offering now. I want to give Bailey enough time uh, to do what it is that he needs to do uh, as he stands on today. If you're in the building and you need a tithe and offering envelope, amen, I ask that you lift your hands and the gatekeepers can get that to you. I'm sure LPC, you already have taken care of your responsibility, amen. We thank you for that. To all of you that are online, amen, there should be something on the screen that can help you give, ways to help you give on today, amen. Now in this, I want to say, we are trying to set up a yearly fellowship where we can come to Chicago, Chicago can come to Memphis, amen. We're, we're trying to set that up, amen, so that we can have some good time, some fun time, and some fellowship time. It's always good, amen, to just fellowship with one another, amen. Amen. You don't have to march, all right? They're going to pass the basket down each row. Amen. Amen. Your music, the powers will come before you. Let's stand, let's pray. Father, we thank you for every gift and for every giver. We thank you, O oh God, for the power and the strength to give wealth. Thank you, O oh God, that you have blessed us beyond what we could ever imagine. We ask, O oh God, that you would bless every seed that is sown on this morning. That none will suffer lack for what they have given, but that you will greatly increase us. According to our faith, God, even according to your word, 160 and a thousand fold. We give it to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We're getting ready to give it. Y'all come on and speak later. Jesus. 
All right, we're so happy to be in Memphis. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is amazing and he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We won't be before you. I'm sounding like we ain't singing in the uh, concert or something. Uh, we just thank God for today. Hallelujah. We give God glory on and praise for Bishop and First Lady Jones. We love you guys so much. And to our pastor and First Lady, to all the LPC people. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm just talking to the band. Get together. Yeah.
And we definitely can't celebrate here without celebrating the phenomenal, Amen. grace, graceful, Amen. Amen. anointed, Amen. Lady George Bailey. Amen. Our sister, Amen. And she came to our women's conference this year and just blew it out the water. Amen. Amen. And just blessed the people of God. And so we celebrate her. And of course, y'all know I say the best for last. Amen. Right. Amen. And I got to thank God for my good thing. Yeah. Amen. My fragrance. Amen. Can y'all celebrate with me, my phenomenal, beautiful wife, Natasha Bailey? Hallelujah. Oh, for real, God has been good to me. God really loved me to send me such a phenomenal woman, of God. Amen. She has always been supportive of me. Always. Always. And, um, and I just thank God she is gifted. Amen. She's talented. She's smart. She is kind. She is important. Amen. She's fine. And she's mine. Amen. I love you, baby. Amen. We celebrate her and we thank God for her. And of course, we just thank God for everybody who's here. Amen. No matter why you're here, uh, you, uh, you may be here to support and hear me to come to support the preacher. But the reality is, this was a setup. Yeah. This was a setup. I believe you're here for a miracle. Yeah. I believe you're here to experience God. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I'm excited about what God's about to do. Hallelujah. Is that true, Ricky? I'm, I'm sorry. I ain't going to say that. Amen. I'm so proud of this young man. I just looked up and said, this look like little Ricky. Um, he's big time, y'all. God is doing great things through this young man. Like our little godson. Y'all uh, might not know, but he was in the Emmett Till movie. Yeah. That came out last year. Yeah. Amen. He, he's uh, at, at the Stacks. Uh, he worked, uh, goes to school at Stacks, and God is just doing great things. He's doing plays. Amen. 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 And uh, God's got great things in store for him. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to see him with us on today. Amen. Amen. And I did see my good friend and brother David, Minister David Pippen. Is he here? Hey, is he still here? He had to leave. I had to leave. I don't know if he was a minister today, but he'll minister Sunday. <laughs> Y'all pray for him. I can say that that's my good friend. Come on, grab your Bibles and turn me. That's a word from the Lord. Luke chapter 15. And Bishop Bailey says, I'm at home. I know I am. And so if you can't understand it, we honor the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. We're excited about what God has to say. <coughs> oh, this table does let up a little bit, right? Oh, it doesn't. Okay, this is time. Okay, let's go. As uh, Ray Charles says, I'm going to make it do what it do, man. <laughs> Luke chapter 15, as we are in this season of reset. I believe God is recalibrating, resetting some things in many of our lives that we really, really do need him to do. Uh, some of us are really uh, in a place, thank you, sir. Some of us are really in a place where we actually need that. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We are in a place where we need God to do something fresh, Amen. something new. Yes. Hallelujah. We need God to reinvigorate us, yes, sir. to reignite us. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. For great things. Hallelujah. Yes. And I think that if you are available to God doing it, he'll do it. Yes, yes he will. If you're open to it, God will do it yes. in your life. And so, I was praying about what to share. The Lord gave me this word, Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 11. Very familiar passage of scripture. Luke 15. Mother Lena definitely recognize you. Thank God for you. Um, look, she's never heard. God bless you. Just want to recognize you. Yes, Lord. God bless you. And I got to, uh, I want to make sure I put this out. Uh, some of you may know and some of you don't know, but my favorite movie is The Color Purple. All right, so, and, and so I, I just want to let my, my brother know that you can have Celia. But you can't have many. <laughs> so Mother Catherine has to stay with me. <laughs> now you can have Celia, but she's been spoiled twice. She's a good hard worker. 
But Eddie, you can't have nothing down, nothing down. Amen. We celebrate and thank God for Mother Catherine. We love her. She is the elder statesman of our ministry. And, uh, and we cherish her dearly. Amen. My wife and I call her all the time. Like, do you need anything? And we mean it. Like, she, she lacks nothing. And we, love, we want to make sure we thank God for her. Luke chapter 15, starting at verse 11. Say amen when you have it. Amen. Here's what the word of the Lord says. Then he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger... Uh, of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. Uh -huh. And so he divided to them his livelihood. Yes, and not many days after the young man gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Uh -huh. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land. Yes, sir. And he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of the country. And he sent him into his fields and fed swine, to feed swine. My Lord. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate. My God. My God. And, and no one gave him anything. Uh -huh. But when he came to himself. Yes, or, uh -huh. But when he came to himself. <laughs> but, but when he came to himself. Yeah. He said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough to spare, but I perish with hope. I will now arise and go to my father and will state and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for revelation. Yes, Lord. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. My Lord. But the father said to his servants, Bring one of the best robe yes, and put it on him and put a ring on his hand yes, and sandals on his feet yes. and bring the fatty calf and kill him and let us eat and be merry yes, for this my son was dead and he is alive again yes, he was lost yes, and now he is fine yes, and they began to be merry yes, Let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you for another opportunity to hear your word. I pray you would speak now and give me preaching power. Let your anointing fall on me right now. So that as the word of God goes forth, God, your people are strengthened. Somebody needs a miracle. Somebody needs a word today. Somebody needs for you to speak into their lives. And so we pray right now that you will move by your power and your strength. We are open to hear from you. Speak, Lord. Open up our hearts, our minds, and our spirits. We empty ourselves out because we are ready. We know you can't pour into a vessel that's full. So we surrender to your will and your word. We're ready to be filled. Let the who have the word, God, to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And we love you. We thank you. We stand ready. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to use for a subject uh, just for a few minutes this morning, Mindset Reset. And the Lord gave me a subtitle, I Changed My Mind. My God, my God. I Changed My Mind. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> Mindset reset. I Changed My Mind. Yes. Uh, some time ago, um, a friend of mine had come to me and wanted to talk about uh, purchasing a car. I had already been through. Uh, the ordeals of purchasing cars. I had already had multiple cars at that time. I had already fallen into all of the pitfalls. I had already made all of the mistakes. I had already done all of the dumb things, you know, that came with that. Because for me, you know, I had the mindset that, you know, I'm 18, I'm grown now. You know, as to say that 
being grown has anything to do with an age. Because that's where many of us are, and I know that's where many of us young, uh, this young generation are, they think they're grown when they hit a certain age, you know, 18 now, you know, so I'm grown, 21 now, I'm grown, mama. You know, 25, now I can rent a car now, I'm grown, but you're still living in my house eating my food, and I'm still picking on me. We say that as if we think that being grown has anything to do with age. When Paul says, when I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, and I reasoned as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Paul changes this dynamic of having us to think that being grown has anything to do with age. It has everything to do with uh, wisdom and maturity. Because Paul says, I didn't become grown until I stopped doing foolish things. Until I stopped doing childish things. Because the reality is, some of y'all 30 and you're still a child. Some of you are 40 and you're still a child. Because you're still doing childish things. But being grown has nothing to do with age. That's right. It has everything to do with your will to grow up yes, and to change the course of your actions. Yes, sir. And so I had made all of the pitfalls and made all of the mistakes and done all of the dumb things. And then my friend comes to me and says, man, you know, I want your advice, you know, on what I need to do to purchase the car, you know, and do this because I know you've already done that. And so I shared all of my advice with my friends like, man, listen, I'm glad you came to me. Because trust me, I'd already made all the mistakes. I've done the stupid things. I told him about first-time buyer programs and all kinds of things that were out there that could really help him and benefit him and put him in a positive position to be able to get his first car and do what he needed to do. Yeah. Um, and so when I was telling him about, you know, hey, you probably want to just start with a good used car first. You know, you don't have to have a new car right now. And he's like, no, man, this is what I want to do. Back up. Back up. But I'm like, well, what you come asking me for? <laughs> you know, that's what you want to do, then just do it. You know, do it. But I'm trying to help you out because I made that mistake and I was where you were, you know, because that's what I wanted to do. You know, I made my money and I wanted to do it my way, but I'm trying to help you. You can learn from my mistakes. You can you can gain wisdom from what I've already failed at. You can now succeed in, and you don't have to go down the same way. But no matter, the more I told him, man, you know, this is the best way to do it, he was like, no, that ain't how I want to do it. No. And so he ended up doing it his way, getting him a new car, you know, didn't read the fine print. Got himself into a situation where he missed one payment and didn't read in the fine print where if you miss the payment, your interest rate skyrockets. Like 20%. Then it just, it, it just got to a bad situation where he was struggling and all this, and he eventually came back to me and said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry, bro. Like, you were right. You were right. Everything you were telling me, I should have did. But, but the reality is, at this particular point, he had already gone through the heartache. Yeah. A heartache that he didn't have to go through. Now, I was glad that he was admitting to me that he made a mistake. Because that's a good sign. The first sign of growth and development is acknowledgement and admitting the fact that you made a mistake. And that's why some of y'all can't grow because you have too much pride. Some of y'all who keep deflecting and blaming other people for what you keep doing yourself. And the reality is I know you were hurt. I know you got some issues. I know you got some things that really happened to you as a child or growing up, and those things are legitimate. Those things are real. Yeah. But you also need to acknowledge the fact that there are some things that have become a result of that. Yeah. And so now you're lazy. Now you don't pay your bills on time. And now you don't talk to people right. And now you ain't trustworthy. You don't tell the truth. And the reality is, just because you are, have been hurt doesn't mean that this ain't real too. And you can't keep using what happened to you to justify not living the way you need to. At some point, get healed, but acknowledge you got some other things you got to work on. Am I talking to anybody this morning? And what you got to do is stop blaming other people for what is your responsibility. You got to stop blaming people for what is yours. Because as long as you keep putting it on everybody else, the same thing is going to keep happening. And you're going to find yourself in a cycle. You're going to find yourself in a cycle doing the same things over and over again. And all you are doing is talking about how you got here. But talking about how you got here ain't what's going to get you out. 
So acknowledgement is good, but at this point I'm hurt. My God. Because now my friend has gone through something that I could have saved him from. Uh -huh. He's experienced a, 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 a problem and an issue that he didn't have to go through. Oh, man, right. Because I had already gone through it for him. But it, it was no matter how much I wanted, I told him that I went through it, no, no matter how, how much I told him that he could have done it a different way, no matter how many times I told him, man, listen, this is the best way to do it, he still did it his way anyway. And I asked the Lord, why? Why would he do this? Because the reality is, my friend was never looking for advice. He was looking for agreement. See, see, he, he came to me and he postured his questions to me in a way that he needed help and needed direction. But the reality is, his mind was already made up. His mind was already made up before he came to me. He wasn't looking for advice. He was looking for agreement. And many of you are like my friend. You're coming and you're seeking help, but the reality is you're not really made your mind up. You coming to your mother and daddy, but you're really doing that out of respect. But you ain't really coming to listen to them. You want them to agree with your foolish decisions. You want them to agree with your foolish mistakes. And so you're posturing and stuff like, uh, Mom, what you think? Uh, Daddy, what you think? When the reality is you already, you don't care what they think because you already made your mind. You've already decided what you want to do. You just want somebody to co-sign. But I'm in a season of my life, let me tell you something. I'm in a season of my life where I'm not paying for decisions. Do you not know that some decisions are so expensive, they are too costly? Hallelujah. And some of us don't realize you're going to pay more for some of the decisions that you're making. That's why you got to take your time and pump your brakes. And seek counsel. But let me tell you something. Let me help free some of y'all. Don't ask for help if you ain't going to use it. Don't ask for help if you're not going to use it. Don't come to me asking me what I think if you're still just going to do what you want to do. Especially if I'm telling you I already did it. I got the scars to prove. And let me tell y'all something. Y'all going to stop signing contracts and going into relationships with people who you show their scars to and they ignore your scars. Just to still jump into sin and jump into foolishness after you showed them the scars from it. Oh, I'm in this season of my life where I'm saying, what you asking me for? That's what I got for you. I don't know what else to tell you. What you asking me for? I got the scars to prove it. You don't have to make the same mistake. Stop asking for help if you're not going to use it. I'm going to tell you why many of us do this. Many of us do this because we just don't like the type of advice we get. That's the reason why we can. That's why we can. We continue to do stuff that we know we should because we don't like the advice because the, the advice that we get is not in agreement with what we have already decided to do. And so because I don't like the advice, then it means that you can't help me. But let me ask you a question. Why does the advice have to feel good? Why, why does my advice have to make you feel good in order for it to be good? Because let me tell you something. Some of the best advice in your life is going to be the kind that's really not going to feel good. Some of the best advice that will save your life will be the kind of advice that will tell you to do something you don't feel like doing, you don't want to do, that you're uncomfortable with, but it will save your life. It will open doors for you. It will perform miracles in your life. Sometimes it's the advice that's uncomfortable that will help you the best. Naaman almost missed his miracle because the advice that the prophet had given to him didn't make sense to him. It was so uncomfortable to him, this man almost missed his blessing that he started walking back home and almost missed his miracle. That's why you got to thank God for the right people in your life because sometimes God will send people in your life who 
who have influence in your life to talk you into doing something that you are about to miss. He has the right people in his life to tell him, Master, if the prophet of the man of God would have given you a word, would you not have done it? And because he had the right people in his life, that's why you got to be careful who you give your ear to. Stop letting everybody talk to you. Stop taking the advice of everybody. Everybody's advice ain't good. Y'all better stop fucking all these social media preachers and prophets. Ain't been licensed by nobody. No. They ain't went through no kind of training or development. And y'all sitting up and trying to put this stuff in. Y'all better stop. Y'all better. Let me tell you something. The devil ain't scared of your quote. You quote quotes and what somebody else said. The devil is afraid of scripture. He's afraid of the word. That is your weapon. That is your power that you can use against the enemy. The word of God. And that's why you got to prioritize God's word in this season of your life. Slap your neighbor high five and say prioritize the word. Prioritize the word. Prioritize the word. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And everything you're looking for is a byproduct of seeking his kingdom. You know why we don't prioritize the word? Because it don't make us feel good. You know why we don't prioritize the word? Because it's not in alignment with what you have already decided. Y'all better stop listening to all these people who are trying to debunk the Bible. The devil is alive. They only debunking what ain't in alignment with what they want to do. And how they want to live. Talking about the word ain't working for them. It ain't working for me. The word ain't working for me. See, the word will work if you're working. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, the word will work if you're working. The reason why you ain't getting no results is because you ain't working it. Do you not know that the Bible ain't nothing but seed? The Bible ain't nothing but seed, and you got a bag of seeds sitting in the back of your car changing colors. That's all it's doing. You got a you got you got a book of a Bible, you got a bag of seed sitting up on your shelf, just gathering dust. Seed ain't no good unless you're invested somewhere. You gotta get that seed in your mind. You gotta get that seed in your heart. You gotta get that seed in your spirit. And you gotta show up to church. And you gotta show up the Bible study. And you gotta show up every time so that you can water it. So that you can see the results of it. Don't miss your blessing because you want instruction that feel good. Because some instructions ain't going to always feel good to you. But it will be good for you. It may not feel good to you, but it's going to feel good for you. It's amazing to me how you can go to your gym and you can go through that process. But you can't let God take you through a spiritual process. Of developing. We go through all kind of other processes that we know. We can't get results overnight, but we go through the process. You got to trust God and go through a process. It's not going to feel good in the moment, but eventually. Yeah, yeah it ain't going to happen overnight, but over time. You'll start, start seeing results in your life. Hallelujah. The same thing is even true for seeking advice from God. That many of us will seek God, but when God's instruction don't make sense with what we have already decided to do, uh-huh. then we do it anyway. My God. And then we come back to God, running back to God, asking God to save us from something that could have been prevented. Yeah. My prayer for you is that you'll live in a season of prevention, not saving. Yeah. Because if you, st- if, you, if you allow the word of God to work in your life to prevent you from some things, if you allow the wisdom of God to work in your life where it will prevent you from some things, God will have to save you from stuff that you didn't have to get yourself into. That's right. That's right. That's good, Pastor. You want to make sure that you're in the season where you're seeking God and you're trusting that when God gives you discernment, when God gives you direction, when God is telling you what to do and what you should not do, you need to trust him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, here's another reason why you got to trust God because, see, the information you have is limited. Because, see, you see the day, but God sees tomorrow. And, see, God is telling you, I can't let you have this, baby. 
Because see, I see what's coming off the road tomorrow. But you're looking at it today, seeing the benefit of it now, but you don't see the consequences that's coming. You see to the corner, God sees around the corner. You see to the hill, God sees over the hill. God's perspective is way better than yours. God's perspective is different from yours. And so God wants to know, if, do you trust me? Do you trust that, that I have a different perspective that is from yours? You want to make sure that when God gives you an instruction to do something, that you follow it. Get yourself in a line with it. The Bible talks about how David sought the Lord. Yes, Even when his enemies came against him at Ziklag and stole everything that he had, took all of his possessions, they took everything that he had. But the Bible says that after David got through crying about it, he sought the Lord. Yes, he encouraged himself and he said, bring me that ephod. He put on the ephod and he sought the Lord for direction. And I love this. I love the fact that David sought God for direction. Because see, sometimes you a move in your emotions and fight a battle that God says was never yours to fight. But because you in your feelings and you, you about to give them a piece of your mind and fight them back, God said, no, 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 no. You ain't got to fight this one. I got this one for you. I'm about to prepare a table in the, before the presence of your enemy. And when it's all said and done, they're going to wish they had a blessed you and not came against you. I wonder, is there anybody in the building who know I got the flame of God on my life? You better watch how you talk to me. Touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. Hallelujah. You can come over with a knife, but you're going to draw back a knob. Why? Because God's hand is on my life. I got this favor on my life. Hallelujah. I don't need everybody. But can I get 25 people to stand up and say, I got the favor. And thank God for the favor that's on your life. Come on, open up your mouth and say, God, I thank you for your favor. I thank you for your favor. I thank you for your favor. Because favor got me where money good. Favor got me where relationships good. Favor. Let me talk to everybody that was pushed in the hole. I want you to know that it wasn't the Midianites that pulled Jacob, Joseph up out of that pit. It was favor. Because favor has buoyancy. Favor will lift you up out of places. Come on, one more time. Give a praise for the favor. I got favor. Don't you dare make a decision without seeking God. Don't make a commitment to anything until you sought counsel. Right. Don't make a commitment to anything, anything until you have sought counsel. Amen. Now I got to say this too as a pastor. I'm just going to be honest. There's some stuff that some of y'all are in that Bishop could have saved you from. Yeah. But in your pride, you didn't want to tell him. Yeah. 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 In your pride, you didn't want to tell him because you already knew that he was going to tell you not to do it. That's why you decided to do it yourself. Yes, Lord. You and have. <laughs> there are some things that leadership, your parents, your pastor, your preacher, your mentors, your coach, there's some things that, that they can save you from if you just seek counsel. Because if you don't trust what I'm telling you, why are you following me? Hello. I mean, why are you following me if you don't trust that what I'm telling you is from God? If you don't trust that I prayed about this and God is giving me wisdom and discernment and giving me the ability to be able to reason. That's right. And why would you follow somebody who you don't trust? That makes absolutely no sense. Why? Because many of us only do church out of tradition. That's right. right. We, we only do church. Let me give God his penance. Yes. I'm going to go to church and then God, all right, I'll see you next week in. My. But you don't talk to him through the week. No, 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 no. You don't see? No, no, no. Because it's not about relationship. It's about religion. But baby, listen. I need my life covered. Yeah. I need my marriage covered. I need my children covered. I need my friends too much to do. The higher you go, the more support you will need. If you know anything about climbing the ladder, you can take
take the first two steps, you don't really need nobody. But the higher you go, the more unstable that ladder will go. Now the ladder is able to get you to where you need to go, but you're going to still need somebody to hold. Where are your ladder holders? Because you're climbing these ladders trying to make these decisions without having ladder holders. Where are your errors and your errors? Because you're going into battle trying to fight a spiritual weapon with natural weapons. A, a, a spiritual battle with natural weapons. But I need my life covered. God is taking me too high. He is elevating me. He is taking me to too many great places. For me not to seek counsel. I want to give you some scripture to help you. Because Proverbs is considered the book of wisdom. I encourage you to read the book of Proverbs. And wisdom is what you need. We all need it, but some of us need a little bit more than others. Here's what the Bible says in Proverbs 12 and 15. Proverbs 12 and 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. But he who heeds counsel is wise. Oh my goodness. Let me read that again. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. See, that's the thing. You ain't pinging that off nobody. You're making these decisions in silos. You're making these vacuum decisions one way in, one way out. And ain't nobody talking to you but you. But let me help somebody. You know that don't nobody talk to you more than you. That's right. You talk to you more than anybody. And, and let me help somebody who's really in a bad place psychologically, spiritually, and mentally. Uh, I believe you have a messaging problem. It's what you keep telling yourself. Yeah. That's the reason why you defeated. Because who, who needs enemies when you got your own defeated self? You don't need nobody to talk you out of there when you talk your own self out of something. You gotta change what you tell yourself. You gotta change your message. The Bible says when the woman with the issue of blood had no more money, when she had no more relationships, the Bible says all she had was a word. And she said, to him, if I can just touch the hem of his arm. Watch this. And the Bible says, and she said to herself, and she said to herself, over and over, you gotta change your messaging from I can't to I can, from the he won't to God will. Because if you keep doing it just because you keep telling yourself, uh, is that true or is that a spirit? And I ain't talking about the Holy Spirit. Proverbs 11 and 14. Proverbs 11 and 14. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. There is safety in a multitude of counsel. Yes. Why is it important to have a multitude of counsel? Because this person might give you advice that this person doesn't. Uh -huh. And this person might have experience in the area that that person did. Right. And now you can use all of it to create the recipe for your life. Uh -huh. Proverbs 15 and 22. Proverbs 15 and 22. Without counsel, plans go awry. Uh -huh. But in the multitude of counsel, they are established. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, God will establish you when you have sought counsel. God will establish you when he knows that you have sought counsel. Whatever you do, you want to make sure that you seek counsel and get sound advice before you step out to do it, especially if you can get advice from somebody who's already done it. Yes, sir. My God. My God. Because they can keep you from error. But if you've been on doing what you want to do, you're seeking your own counsel, then it's likely that that's going to be an issue. It's going to be a problem. We see this in this particular passage of Scripture. We see this where this son has come to his father. And he's gotten to an age where he feels like he knows what he's doing. He's gotten to a place where he feels like, um, you know, that I'm old enough to make these decisions on my own and by myself. And without coming to the counsel of the one who God assigned to him, without asking that, what you think? He just decides to just step out and do something that's not wise. He's stepping out to do something that he has not self counsel. Oh. My God. And then he takes his future. He takes, he's not supposed to get this until his dad has passed on. Yeah, right. But he's asking his dad, give my allowance. Yeah. 
So I can go do what I need to do. What he's doing is, he's asking his daddy to give him his future. So he can spend it now. Give my future so I can mess it up now. Give my future so I can do what I want to do. And the Bible says he took what he wasn't supposed to get for a while. And he went and spent it on all kind of wild living. And listen, the Bible says he went to a faraway country. Oh, look, this boy said, I need to make sure I get far away from my dad. I don't need to be nowhere close where he might be able to tell me, see, I told you so. He made sure he got way far. I'm going to a far country. I'm getting way out the way. And all you're doing is just getting farther from your help. All you're doing is just getting farther from your, from your support. The Bible says he went and spent all of everything that he had on riotous living, on wild living, and he lost it all. He lost it all. And found himself in a place, found himself in a place where he realized that this was a bad mistake. The Bible says he met somebody, he, he met somebody who employed him. And the Bible says that he was working in a pig's pen. Now let me put this in perspective for you. This boy is a Jew. If you know anything about Jews, Jews don't fool with pigs. Jews do not, they don't eat pig, they don't touch the pig, they consider the pig as an unclean animal. They don't fool with pig. But here it is, watch this, the Bible says he was working for pig, but here's the dangerous part. The Bible says he would love to fill himself. With the food that the pigs ate. My God, son. Do you know why? Because when you lost everything that you had, you're now in the place where anything. I'll, I'll take anything. And that's what happens when you walk away from your support, when you walk away from your healing, when you walk away from those who are calling you. You start longing for anything. Anybody's support. Anybody's advice. My God, my but at God. some point you got to make a change. And I love this. The Bible says that the boy came to himself. Yeah, yeah. I love that. He finally came to himself. And the boy started thinking. He says, wait a minute. How many people live better than I'm living right now? And they work for my dad. He came to himself. Look at your neighbor and say, come to yourself. Come to yourself. You got to come to yourself. You, you got to change. You need a reset. That's exactly what was happening. God was resetting his mindset. God was resetting his spirit. God was resetting him so that when he go back, he'll have a different, number one, change of perspective. That's my first point. Because I believe that God wants to get you back. Uh, I just need to see the hands of those who need God to change some things in your life. Come on. I just need to see the hands of those who need God to do a reset in this season of your life. God, I need a reset. God, I need you to change and shift some things in my life. The first thing you need to do is change your perspective. Yes. You got to change your perspective. Because the boy finally got out of his pride, overcame his pride. And the Bible says, and he came to himself. Notice that the prodigal son started thinking about all of the servants who worked for his dad and how they were living better than he was. These are things that he didn't give consideration to when he was at home with his father but now he's thinking about them. Why? Because of how bad his situation has got. Let me tell you something. Lack will make you look at things differently. Lack will make you look at things differently. Hallelujah. Because see some people don't understand where you come from. They don't understand why you give God praise. Some people will sit there and look at you like, it don't take all of that. Why you got to praise God? But baby, you don't know from which I come. You don't know. See, some of y'all don't remember the days. See, some of y'all ain't never had to eat ketchup and mustard sandwiches. Some of y'all don't know nothing about that government cheese. Not, not government. That government cheese. That you needed two people to cut. You needed somebody to hold. The being of it. You had to put your shoulder into it. Some of y'all don't know nothing about this. Some of y'all don't know nothing about eating beef. What no neighbor and it was just beef. Pork. Some of y'all don't know about having to put water in the ketchup bottle. 
just to have to make ends meet because you couldn't afford to buy no more ketchup. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? I gotta learn about eating sugar sandwiches. See, you don't know from whence I come. See, I know you grew up with a silver spoon in your mouth and you've always had it, but they ain't always been there for me. I've had moments where God has had to make up the difference. There were days when we only had two ingredients in the cupboard, but my mother and my grandmother knew how to get in there and make a whole meal for the family. You don't know from whence I come. See, you see my glory, but you don't know my story. I wonder if there's anybody that's got a story. Come on, slap three people high five and say, I got a story. I got a story. And if you knew my story, you would praise God with me. If you knew from whence I came, you would bless him with me. If you knew the hell that I was in, if you knew what God had to pull me out of, you would praise him. I'm about to take a victory now. Because I know from which I come, I got a testimony. I got a story. Come on, somebody praise God because you got a story. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, you see the top different when you've lived at the bottom. You, you see the top differently when you've lived at the bottom. Because when you've always been at the top, you don't appreciate it. But is there anybody that wasn't born at the top? God had to pull you out of the muck and the mire and clay. Hallelujah. God had to pull me out of some stuff. And I have a great, a different appreciation and perspective of the top because of from whence I've come. You got to change your perspective. On how you see this. Yeah. Number two, when you change your perspective, you'll change your position. Yeah. Good, man. Yeah. When you change Good. your perspective, Good. you will change your position. Because yeah. listen, the Bible says when the boy came to himself and started thinking about how much better his father's servants were. Yeah. And how he was beneath where the servants were. He stopped thinking about it and he did something about it. Because the Bible says he got up and he turned. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Give me a minute here to stay right here. The Bible says he got up and he, he turned. I, I believe that some of you are in a season where there are some things you need to turn away from. That there are some people in your life that you need to turn away from. That there are some things and some people and some relationships in your life that they have outlived the, the, yeah, the date in their life. Some of y'all still living on old relationships that have surpassed the date. They ain't even good for you no more. They're spoiling and you still eating it. Hallelujah. There are some things you need to turn away from. The boy realized, watch this, that turning was his father's decision, turning was his. Yeah. So he got up on his own two legs yes, and, and turned back to his father. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me that I've been here this long because I wanted to? You mean to tell me I could have been out of this thing a long time ago? If I would have just turned, I've been here all of this time and I could have decided to leave. Yes. Some of us are in things longer than we have to be. Yeah, let me put this in the atmosphere and prophetically say for somebody, it's a new season for you. Yeah, God is about to bring you into a new season. Oh, look at your neighbor and say it's a new season for you. And I want you to know that this season doesn't work like winter, spring, summer, or fall. Because those seasons only come every three months. But God says this season is going to change because you change. Your season is going to turn because you turn. Is there anybody who can receive that and believe I'm about to walk into a new season? Because I decide to. I'm deciding to walk in my new season. I'm walking into my new season because God has been waiting on me. Somebody give God praise. I do believe it's my season. It's my season. Slap your neighbor high five and say, it's your season. It's your season. It's your money. You can use it whenever you want to. 
It's your season. You can walk in it whenever you're ready to. The only reason why you are still there is because you ain't decided to leave. Ain't nobody keeping you there. You are choosing to stay. But you got to change your perspective so that you can change your position. Because once the son changed his perspective, he then changed his position and went back to his father's house. Listen to me. You will never change your position if you don't change your perspective. You, and you will never change your position if you don't change your perspective. Now listen, this boy said, man, my daddy got servants that live better than this. My God, my God. And, and thank God that he's come to himself, change of perspective. Thank God that he's gotten up and turned, but he still doesn't get it. Because the boy says, I'm going to go back to my father's house and ask if I could be a servant. Yes, sir. Which brings me to my last point. Let me go give it to you. Change your purpose. <laughs> Change your purpose. Change the course of your life. Because listen to this. This boy says, I'm going to go back to my daddy's house and I'm going to ask my daddy if I can be calm like one of the servants. Because my life ain't got so bad to it. I'll take that. See, I understand this testimony. If God never does anything else. If he never does anything else, he's already done more than enough. Come on, is there anybody who, that's your testimony that, that if God never does anything else, he already done more than I deserve. He, he shouldn't have to do it. He don't have to do it. But let me help you. Don't live there. Don't live there. Because you think that just because you missed the mark and you made mistakes, that God is some kind of way going to change his purpose for you. That he's going to change his idea and his plan. He said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you, I anointed you, and I, I, I anointed you to, to be a prophet to the nation. God says, I gave you your plan, your purpose before you ever had a problem. Look at your neighbor and say, your purpose came before your problem. The issue is, you think that your problem is going to change your purpose. No, your purpose came first. You just need to get back in alignment with God's plan for your life. Just start thinking that he's going to come back and be less than what his dad wants for him. But the Bible says that when the boy came back, his daddy was already waiting for him. Because he knew that that was a day where he was going to have to come back and get in the wheel and get in the line. And is there anybody grateful that God is watching you and God is waiting for you? Come on, slap your neighbor high five and say, God is just waiting on you. The Bible says that his daddy was waiting on him and he ran out to hug him. And listen, the boy says, Daddy, can you just make me a slave? The daddy says, boy, you crazy. That ain't my plan for you. That ain't what I called you. You are an heir and a joint heir. You will move from if he never does anything else to put me back in position where I'm supposed to be. Is there anybody who's grateful that God put you back where you're supposed to be? And it ain't got nothing to do with how good you are, but it has everything to do with how good he is. Somebody give God praise. Give him praise. Because I'm coming back to purpose. I'm coming back to his plan for my life. I'm coming back to his assignment for my life. I'm coming back to God's will for my life. Hallelujah. I failed, but he still called me to be a preacher. I failed, but he still called me to be a missionary. I missed the mark. But he still said, start that business, write that book, step out on faith. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Somebody give God praise. Like you're grateful that God hasn't changed his mind about you. God hasn't changed his mind about you. 
somebody give him praise or you pray for that God has a chase his mind about them. I know who I am, and now I know whose I am. And I'm grateful that God has a chase his mind about me. I got purpose to fulfill. I got purpose to fulfill. I got a plan to get in the mind of me. Come on, somebody give God praise. Are you grateful? I said, praise them like you're grateful. That God didn't give up on me. That God didn't throw in the towel. That God kept me. Because he that has been gone a good work in you is faithful to perform. He's faithful to bring it up to the day of completion. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm done. But I got a purpose to fulfill. Come on, somebody give God praise. Like you believe. You got a purpose to fulfill. Yeah, 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 yeah. I missed the mark, but I'm still anointed. I missed the mark, but I'm still cold. I fell short, but I'm still on assignment because God didn't give up on me. God didn't give up on me. People gave up, but God wouldn't. God didn't give up on me. Hallelujah. Here's how I know. Here's how I know God didn't give up on me. Here's how I know God didn't give up on me. Here's how I know God didn't give up on me. Because I still got breath in my body. And if I got breath in my body, that means he ain't done with me yet. I still got the activities on my feet. I can still praise him. I still got a belt. I can lift up a worship. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise. Like he didn't give up on me. God didn't give up on me. God didn't give up on me. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That you didn't give up on me. Thank you. Hallelujah. Somebody praise him because you're still here. Praise him because you're still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. This ain't for the people that were born at the top. This is for the people who were born at the bottom. And God has to lift you out of the book and fire and pray. I'm still here. See, I've done some things that if other people knew about, you wouldn't like me no more. But I'm grateful for the fact that God knew I did some things and He still called me. He still anointed me. He still appointed me. He still blessed me. Come on, somebody praise Him. Like He looked beyond your coast and saw everyone in your knees. Some of y'all sit there like hypocrites, like you know God ain't been good to you. But God's been good to me. And I'm going to let him know he's been good to me. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Yes, I am. Hallelujah. Come on. Lift those hands and pray. Lift those hands and pray. Like you're grateful, lift those hands and pray. Let God know how grateful you are. Come on, let him know. Let him know how great you are. That he didn't give up on you. That he didn't throw in the towel. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Bishop, if it's okay, I want to do an altar call. Because somebody needs to turn back. You need to change your perspective. You need to change your position. So you can realign with your purpose. Come on, those right now, just press your way. Press your way to this altar that you need God to reset. You need a reset. Come on. Come on. I changed my mind. Come on. Come to this altar. Anybody that needs a reset, you need God to do something new in your life. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you. I want to touch and agree with you. Hallelujah. God bless you, God. Come on. Is there anybody? Come on. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Come on up, come on up, come on up. 
Come on up, come on up, come on. Come on up, come on, come on. I want to pray for you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. God needs to do a reset in your life. Hallelujah. God wants to reset some things in your life. And the reality is, the decision is on you. God will do it, but God wants you to come into agreement. Come on, they're still coming. Come on. I want to pray with you. I want to touch and agree with you. Hallelujah. I feel like God is about to do something new in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody needs a mind reset. Somebody needs a financial reset. Hallelujah. And I believe God's about to do it in your life. Hallelujah. Everybody else that didn't come to the altar, I just need you to pray. Just point your, hand, your hands, extend your hands in this direction. Hallelujah. Yes. God is about to change your circumstances and your situations. God's about to reestablish you. And essentially what God is saying is I need you to come in agreement with what I've already planned for your life. Yeah. And listen to me. You already started the process well because some of y'all didn't want to come because of how it feels. That starts the process. Hallelujah. Everybody at this altar, lift your hands right now. Hallelujah. And focus on God. I want to pray for you. I want to stand in the agreement that God is about to reset some things in your life. Hallelujah. He's about to bless you beyond measure. Hallelujah. Everybody else, I want you to pray. I want you to pray right now. But I believe God's about to do some new things in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Come on, lift those hands and praise right now. God's about to do a new thing in your life. He's about to reestablish you. Hallelujah. Right now, God, we want to say thank you for every single one of my brothers and sisters who pressed their way to this altar. Hallelujah. Some of them are going through things that they've never shared, things that they've never told anybody about, things that almost took them out. But I stand in agreement with them right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you right now that even as I'm standing in the gap for them, lifting them in prayer, laying hands on them, that literally you are resetting their minds right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you that minds are turning back to you. Hearts are turning back to you right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, hallelujah, that anointing is returning. Hallelujah. I thank you that favor is returning on their life. the strength and the power to stand different. That you didn't call us to be here, but you called us to stand out. And they help them to understand that they can't make a difference if they ain't different. So give them the boldness to live for you to do what needs to be done. God, I thank you right now that you're restoring their hearts and their spirits to prioritize you in every area of their life right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, do it. I thank you that you're raising up a generation of children who will be committed to you, who will love you right now, who will cry out to you, and who will live for you. We come against the enemy who think that they can have our children. Devil, you are alive. Remove your hands right now in the name of Jesus. You cannot have them because they belong to you right now, Lord. Who wants to pray to restore them right now? Thank you for healing. Thank you for restoration. Jesus. Do it right now in the name of Jesus. 
God prays for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the shift. Thank God for the reset. Thank God for a changing of the mind. I think what blessed me more than anything is that Pastor Tim made an incredible point. And that point is before you had a problem, you had a purpose. And no matter what you've done in your life, no matter how many mistakes you've made, no matter how many times you have stumbled and failed, the fact that you still have breath in your body and you are able to get up and get back in line spells there's still time left. And I thank God for that word today. Many of us can identify with that word. We can identify with that word. Because we needed the right advice, but because it did not line up with us and what we wanted, we turned and went the other way. But when you understand that God will send counsel, and sometimes it don't feel good. I always say this, many times we look for environments to feel good and not God. It's not about feeling good because the right advice is the advice that's going to set your life on the right path. And it doesn't always feel good. I thank God for this man of God. I thank God for your obedience, PT. Thank you for that. Just man falls how many times? Seven times. But he gets back up. He realizes himself with the Lord. And he gets back to the things of God. I want to offer Christ to you if there's someone in this place that feels that this is a place that God is calling you to worship. Those of our father house are open. This is about a reset. Yes, yes. This is about God resetting, restructuring, realigning, reloading. Yes. But there's someone online that feel like God is calling you to align yourself with this ministry. There is someone.
God for you. The word of God declares when one comes, the angels in heaven rejoice. We're going to rejoice with the angels in heaven. Make us joyful, Lord, unto the Lord all ye land. Shout unto the Lord for the voice of triumph. Come on, good God for it. Give him honor and give him glory. Where is Lady Bailey? I know she's just a bit here. Get Lady Bailey. Give us your name. Her name is Kaya Pruitt. Kaya Pruitt. Kaya Pruitt. Uh, we know when she was a little girl. You know our family her whole, our whole life. But Kaya is one of Lady Bailey's parents. Uh, Lady Bailey, her child, is part of Lady Bailey's daycare. Amen. And it's just a beautiful thing. Yes, come on up here, buddy. <laughs> so go on. Amen. That's right. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, clap again. Clap again. China, to China. Good to see y'all. Amen. I just want to say to China's mother traveled all the way here. Sister Barry, where is she? Mother Barry and her friend, friend of the name, all the way up in Jackson, Tennessee area. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all for coming and being with us. Amen. Amen. Two things. We want to expedite an offering for this speaker. We know we cannot pay uh, a man of God for preaching the gospel. Our ultimate reward comes from God. Uh, so it wasn't free speech after all. Amen. Sometimes. 
but we want to share on today. I'm going to start this offer now for the hundred dollars, and I just want it right wherever you are. Just raise your hand, and we'll get that gift. We'll get the basket to you. Amen. Amen. So into this man of God, so into this ministry, and believe that God's going to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think according to the power that works in us. Amen. We got hands raised. Let's get those baskets to them. Amen. As we're making ready, y'all, we got some food. We, we've eaten spiritually. Amen. We've got food. And we're going to ask that you guys would share with us. Amen. Come and eat with us in our banquet hall next door. And we're going to have to look into how we're going to seat people um, we got a couple more tables that we're going to pull out and we'll line up across here after we have filled up in there. Amen. And my responsible eaters, uh, y'all can just take a seat somewhere. Amen. But we want all children sitting at tables. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's stand. Now, PT, I don't know when you're going to bring us, but we need to start playing. So, restoration, start putting your coins up. Put, put, put some coins to the side, amen. We're going to Chicago, amen. We're going to Chicago, and we're going to have a good time, amen. We'll believe in God for... PT, Lady Baylor, LPC in this season that they're going to purchase their facility. Amen. Yeah. We're standing. We're standing with them. And we're going to sow seed. Amen, somebody. We're going to sow seed and believe that God is going to do it for a beautiful facility. Beautiful thing that God is doing in due time, in due season. God will perfect that that concerns you. Amen, somebody. Amen. All right, all right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for every gift that has been sown through your people on today, God. As we sow into this man of God, we realize that we cannot pay anyone for preaching the gospel, God. But ultimately, our gift comes from you. But I pray, God, a special blessing upon everyone who has sown into this man of God's life. Let them reap a harvest, God, immediately in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Thank you, God, for this word that was sown in this place on today, God. It helped so many of us, God. Thank you, God, for a timely word, a relevant word, oh God. A word that has shifted our mindset, oh God, to get back to perspective, oh God, so that we can be in position to continue to pursue our purpose. We thank you for it. Now, God, as we're going down from this place, we ask that you bless the food, God. Bless the hand that prepared the food. God, that it be nourishment to our body, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, look in on those who are less fortunate in this hour, supplying all of their needs according to your riches through by Christ Jesus. Now as we go down from this place, never ever from your presence, keep us until we shall meet again in Jesus' name. Amen. Other least two or three people that tell them I love you and then I thank you and do it back.